my beautiful people, my beautiful people, my beautiful people. Welcome back to another lovely episode of the Logic Over Emotions podcast slash reactions. It's your dog, your brother, man, your favorite African-American, Melly, baby. We're going to check out some hoop stuff, man. But from the legend, Jimmy High Roller, and this one is about, can you buy an NBA championship, man? And, um, well, I have no idea. So let's talk about it. Go right into it, man. Roll the 10K subs. Please like, comment, subscribe. Join the Banks community. Join the Banks family. Follow me on Instagram at M-E-L-L-V-B. Follow me on Twitch at Melly the Third 3 rd It'll be down in the description down below. All I need is one more. I get to 50, and then I'll start streaming again. Love and appreciate y'all, man. Let's get right to it. Shout out to Jimmy. Love you, bro. Your 2022 NBA champion, Golden Ooh. State Warriors. Oh, God, Question. Toscano. <laughs> Can you buy wins in the NBA? Oh, uh, Toscano. Uh, uh, and Weatherspoon. Oh, we get to use Weatherspoon right now. If a team spends enough Trash money, will defense. it inevitably lead them to a title? I asked these questions because a couple weeks ago, news broke that the Warriors had signed their up-and-coming star Jordan Poole to a four-year extension worth $123 million. That brother's playing like he's worth $10 right now, y'all. It's crazy. And then shortly after, it was announced that Andrew Wiggins also it won't last. agreed to a four-year extension right. with the Warriors for $109 million. Two nine-figure deals dished out on the same day by the same team. So much but money, man. So much money. Wiggins are mm. the highest-paid players on the Warriors. That would be Stephen Curry, who is also so. the highest-paid player in the entire NBA. And then Klay Thompson, and then Draymond Green, and then Jordan Poole. And Damn, Klay at 40K? Well, damn. Andrew Wiggins. Just these five players combined will make a mind-boggling $174 million in the 2023-2024 NBA man. season. Mm. For perspective, when the Warriors assembled arguably the greatest team ever in 2017, the entire oh team Oh, my God. Ian Clark. Oh, man. I miss him, bro. Oh, man. <laughs> McCall. Livingston, oh, the mid range guy. Oh, I don't even want to talk about it. I don't even want to talk about it. $1 million. The Warriors are here. <sighs> David West. Oh, man, that team was so good. Yo, CCBN, you be killing me with this. Go, 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 go get your money, bro. Actually, I don't think he, I don't think you can even be paid all this. Let's just know. I don't get paid for these videos. Well, actually, for the for Jimmy's, yeah. If I react to it, but. When it comes to uh, NBA games, I don't get paid. In any other team in NBA history, they copyright claim me immediately as the best team in the league. And so far, it's looking like a great investment. So I'll ask again: Can you buy a championship in the NBA? Well, there's really only one way to find out. I love it. Today's video is brought to you by SeatGeek. A new get your NBA money, Jimmy. Season is upon us. Just look at it. Get your money, LeBron my brother. James joined the Miami Heat as unanimously the best player on the planet. Oh, wow. And in his first season with the team, he made Ooh, $14.5 Ooh. million dollars from his NBA salary. At the time, this was a nice big contract for the league's premier superstar. Man, that Heat LeBron. But the times Ooh. have changed. Man. Oh, my God, John Wall. Oof. Wow. Lonzo Ball's up there, too. Wow. One hundred and two. There are one hundred and two NBA players who will make more money this season than a prime LeBron James made a decade ago. Part of this is due to inflation. Yeah, about to say, yeah, this yeah. is due to the fact that the NBA simply generates far more revenue yep, than it did, did back before. Then. Yeah. But throughout NBA history, teams have been willing to pay an insane amount of money to have a chance at a championship. In Michael Jordan's last season with the Bulls, MJ was paid quite possibly the most amount of money relative to his peers in Tongue the out. history of sports. In the 1997-1998 mm. NBA Poetry season, emotion. Michael Jordan made 33.14 million dollars from his NBA salary. 
by himself, MJ made more money than the combined team salaries Last of 19 year. other NBA teams that season. Ooh. His contract was so massive that the league implemented a maximum salary rule the following season, which prevented teams from paying the equivalent of an entire roster's payroll to, to one, one player. single player. Yeah. Even by today's standards, this is a giant one-year salary. But if we adjust for inflation and total revenue driven by the league, Jordan's 1998 salary would be the equivalent of an NBA player making approximately $120 million this season, which makes the contracts of even the highest paid players today look like an absolute bargain. Jesus, he literally is getting, that. He, he, be, he be getting damn near twice as much as Steph, four, eight, 12, three times. Almost three times. Oof. It's insane. John Wall getting 47 is crazy, though. But John Wall back then was stupid nice. But still seeing that is, oh, my God. Woo! It's but a lot it's of true. money. The man was very valuable. And this massive contract would prove to be well worth the investment. The Bulls needed Michael. And they also knew that having him on their roster was the closest thing to a guaranteed championship. Mm -hmm. So they paid up and were rewarded for doing so. Absolutely. But in today's NBA, a league that's crowded with talent, nine-figure contracts Hard. being handed to players coming off the bench, is it possible to buy your way to a championship? If a team is willing to pay a hefty luxury tax and spend more than market value for the available talent, does that guarantee success? Well, first, let's look at the teams that actually won championships throughout the years and how much they okay. spent on their roster. Okay, okay, Last okay, okay. season, the Warriors won the championship, and wouldn't you know it, they had the highest payroll in the entire NBA. Yeah. In 2021, the Bucks won the championship, and they did not have the highest payroll in the entire NBA. In fact, among all teams mm. that won a championship over the last 30 seasons, oh, wow. only... Wow. So... Only time really Golden State was even number one on the payroll was in 2022 and 2018. But 2015, they were 14. 27, they were four. Wow. Lakers were number 11. Bucks were number seven. Raptors were number four. So you got to be kind of up there, but then not really at the same time. Hmm. Very interesting. Detroit, number seven. Only five championship teams had the largest payroll in the NBA. When looking at the numbers, there's actually almost no correlation to how much a team is willing to spend and whether they win the championship or not. Sure, teams with some of the cheapest rosters virtually never win, but teams that have some of the most expensive rosters also don't win the majority of the time either. Right. And surprisingly, eight of the last 30 championship teams had a total team salary that was cheaper than the average team salary in the league at the time. 24 the on the paper. example Whoa. of this was back in 1995 when the Rockets won a championship despite having the fourth cheapest payroll in the entire league. Money can buy good players, but it can't prevent injuries, ah. locker room issues, unforeseen circumstances, <laughs> and it certainly cannot buy a championship. Yo, that Devin Booker, damn. Oh, my God. I know that. That hurt, bro. That hurt a lot. Oh, my God. That, that's, that's, that, that was real pain. But what about wins? Does spending far more money than other teams <laughs> equate okay. to winning more games than other teams? Well, last season, the Lakers had a team payroll of $164 million, and they won just 33 games. That same season, the Grizzlies won 56 games and had a team payroll mm. of just $117 million. The Lakers spent damn near $50 million more than the Grizzlies just to not even make the playoffs. But this is an extreme example of team payrolls not quite converting to wins. Right, so no, absolutely Here's true. a graph of every NBA team last season with team payroll on the left and total wins on the right. Mm. And if you look closely, there's actually a subtle correlation between how much a team spends the on the roster in a season and how many wins they pile up. These teams spent less money and won fewer games. Mm -hmm. These teams spent more money and won more games. But there's no exact science here. For example, the Thunder spent about 45 cents on the roster last season <laughs> and still won more games than the Rockets, Pistons, and Magic. The hey, Rockets gonna be good. I mean, sorry. Thunder gonna be good, man. They look so phenomenal, bro. Oh, I love... I, I, again, I forgot his name who got hurt. Is, is, is it uh, Chet? Chet? I forgot his name. But... Whoever, I forgot who do this. I got hurt with playing in the, in the Drew League. Man. Those, all those brothers together, they are nice, bro. They, they're going to be nice, man. I'm telling y'all. Phoenix Suns spent a little bit more than the league Watch out for the on Thunder. their roster last season. And they won by far the most games in the regular season. But generally speaking, spending more money does in fact yield more wins for any given team. 
but far more often, it will not yield a championship. Mm. That, however, has not stopped teams from trying. Back in 2005, New York Knicks owner James Dolan went all in. Also, let me say this too. When it comes to just the whole factor, let's talk about this, the whole Nuggets situation. Let's talk about the Nuggets. Let's talk about uh, the Warriors. Those are homegrown. So, I really can't be mad at those that players got better from growing from where they were drafted to. It's it's the dudes that they I call them hitmen basically. When when you when you when you basically get somebody from another team and you dump a bunch of money on them to be there for like a year or so. Just like how did they how did they with a Kawhi for example? Like Kawhi was a hitman. He came in, did his thing, got chip, left. Which I was still shocked by, but it is what it is. But I can't I can't blame people that were homegrown. You know what I'm saying? Versus those that are just buying other players from all over the place instead of developing their players. You know, that that's that's a little different. And spent a criminal one hundred and twenty four this, this, million this scumbag on the here. Knicks roster oh. that season. If, if you're if you're from New York was forty six million dollars. Oh my god. So with the roster payroll that dwarfed the league's salary cap, that Dolan tax. paid the league a mind numbing sixty two point three million dollars in luxury tax in uh, hopes that his wealth would grant him basketball immortality. And it did not. It did not. <laughs> the finished the season with just twenty three wins and the worst <laughs> record in the Eastern Conference. Money cannot buy you an NBA championship. But the goal isn't just to spend as much money as possible. And people forget, too, just because you have a nice-ass team doesn't mean that you're going to flow correctly. You're not going to have good chemistry. It doesn't mean things are just going to work out. I don't think a lot of people understand that. Just like how we're seeing with the Nets, for example, and even the Lakers, for another example. And low-key, like, uh, I mean, the Warriors, I don't know what's up with them, but I could kind of say that right now with the Warriors. They just, they just seem out of whack. I don't know if it's the, you know, winning the championship jitters or something or just when, when the, uh, uh, Wait, what do they call it? Um, when you win the chip, I don't remember what it's called, but they just they just don't seem there yet. You know what I'm saying? So I, I actually actually I can't, I can't put them. In. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll say the Lakers. Then. I'll say the Lakers. I'll say uh, mm, the freaking Knicks have a nice team, but they just I don't know. Something's weird about them. Um, I don't know, bro. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. The goal is to sign the best, most cohesive players money can buy to your roster. Which Timberwolves. Which, its very nature, leads to spending more money. Yep. Clippers. For this exact reason, the rookie contract is by far the most valuable deal in the NBA. Last season, players like Darius Garland and Trey Young were all-star caliber talents for the small price equivalent to that of a bench warmer. Thanks to his rookie contract, Luka Doncic was named first team All-NBA last season while being the 126th highest paid player in the NBA. Right behind players like Al Farouk Aminu, Rashawn oh, Holmes, wow. and Jeremy Lamb. In fact, here's a graph of how much. Where the hell is Jeremy Lamb? Oh, cute little kitty. What's up? Kind of cool the way you mix it up. Like this? Uh -huh. Yo. Making everybody be like. Yo, Jeremy Lamb just up and just dipped. Been around the world a time or two. I never seen anything quite like you. Now you got everybody trying to. Are you ready for flu season? Everyone should get a flu shot. Cute little baby. Six months and old. Wow. Every NBA player is paid relative to how much value they give their teams in terms of win shares. It's not perfect, but it does the job. Now, in a perfect world, every player would be paid exactly what they were worth, which hypothetically is this line right here. But of course, this is rarely the case. Jonas Valanciunas and Daniel Tice are examples of two players who get paid exactly what they're worth statistically. Their teams are literally and statistically getting what they paid for. Now, most NBA players fall right here. Role players, rookies, mm. young unproven talent, guys like that. Over here are the players who are grossly underpaid, usually rookies stuck on their first contract waiting to cash in once it expires. Right. Here's Trey Young, here's Luka Doncic, yeah, 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 yeah. and here's Mikel Bridges. These are the contracts owners and GMs dream of. Overall, players below this line would be considered underpaid, and players above this line would be considered overpaid. Mm. Despite being the fourth highest paid player in the NBA last season, Russell Westbrook didn't offer much from a winning perspective, which resulted in him landing here. Oh my According God. to the numbers and injured players aside, the most overpaid players in the league last season were Russell Westbrook, Kimball Walker, and Blake Griffin. Mm -hmm. Their impact on winning is slightly above that of an average player, but they're all getting paid like they're superstars. But 
You would never say that Giannis Antetokounmpo is overpaid, and yet he's way up here. Same goes with Nikola Jokic, Kevin Durant, Joel Embiid, and LeBron James. In fact, most above average NBA players would be considered overpaid relative to the rest of the league because you're either good enough for ownership to keep you around, which allows you to make demands regarding your contract, mm. or you're just below average, making you completely replaceable, virtually making it impossible to negotiate a decent contract, and you'll just take whatever you can get. Mm -hmm. There's hardly any middle ground here, and the Warriors are a glaring example of this. Since after re-signing Jordan Poole and Andrew Wiggins, the Warriors' big five land here. And this oh right God. here perfectly summarizes the financial aspect of the NBA. Kevin Durant did not contribute three times as much to the Nets last season as, let's say, DeJounte Murray did to the Spurs last season. Mm. And yet, KD made three times as much as Murray did. Because when... And I said that to y'all too. I said KD's impact is not as good as y'all think it is. Y'all think scoring is just it, bro. It's not. He's actually one of the worst defenders in the league too. And he's not that great of a playmaker. I was saying that before and then I see comments now here, but just... I see comments like on on other YouTube channels and stuff like that because people agree with me. They also said, said the same thing too. And then the comment section is like, oh, y'all know what you're talking about, blah. I'm just like, yo, bro, y'all are drunk. <laughs> y'all are very drunk. When a player reaches a certain level of excellence, there is no formula to how much they're worth. You don't bargain with these players, and you certainly do not let them walk mm. and risk ruining your chances Ooh, at a title. Okay, you you simply Ugh. pay them whatever they want, and you count your blessings. But according to the rules, the Warriors can only pay Steph so much. Thanks to Michael Jordan, his NBA salary has a very finite ceiling, but the rest funny. of the money can go to every other player that helped them win a championship. Shout out to Jordan Poole. That's Steph my guy. Steph has reached a level in the NBA, and specifically within the Warriors franchise, where he can demand virtually any dollar amount, mm -hmm. and it would be completely justifiable Steph could ask the Warriors for a hundred and fifty million dollars a year and if it and they better give the it maximum salary rule Joe Lacob would be so eager to get him his money he wouldn't be able to pull out his checkbook fast enough similar to what the I don't think y'all understand how much Steph and, and those brothers really like elevated Golden State like look at the worth of Golden State back in the day versus now it's absolutely ridiculous you talk about impact <laughs> Bulls did with Michael Jordan in his last few seasons Bro. with the team, the Warriors are going all in with Curry. They know that as long as he's in his prime, they have a damn good shot at winning another title. They've got their hands on one of the greatest players of all time and a supporting cast that complements his skill set better than anything they could have imagined. So if it means paying a young Jordan Poole one of the biggest contracts in the entire NBA, paying an aging Draymond Green more money than any other team would offer, and paying Andrew Wiggins exactly what he asked for, it's all worth it. Is any player overpaid if they play a crucial role in winning a championship? It's tough to call anyone overpaid if they were a vital component to yep. winning that banner yeah, that hangs yep. in your rafters. And they give your team a legitimate opportunity to hang another one. Because of the maximum salary rule, Steph will never get paid truly what, what he's he worth. deserves. Yeah. And that doesn't mean the Warriors can't spend the money in other places. Now you know you're good when you get paid, but you know you're great when you get other people paid. And because of Steph's impact, his whole squad is laughing to the bank. Because just like every team that came... He said, you know you're good when you get paid, but you know you're really good when you get your homies paid. Round of applause for that bar right there. My God. That is some facts. That is absolute facts. Before them, the Warriors cannot buy a championship, but that won't stop them from trying. Great video, Jimmy. Great video, my brother. That's thumbnail right there. Where the hell did Steph go? That's thumbnail right there, boy. My God. Great freaking video, man. Oh, man. Jimmy always has... Jimmy, I, I hope you see this one day, man. You got... Oh, my God. I, I, yo, I got to do my hair. Yo, Jimmy, you got to get into uh, movie movie producing or something, bro. Because yeah, you are phenomenal, bro. It don't make no sense for you to be this good. And just be doing YouTube, bro. You are phenomenal, bro. Can you get a round of applause to, uh, excuse me, cousin Jimmy. Great video. But again, I've always said that too. I said you could pay as much as you want. You can do all these different things. If the chemistry is not there, bro, you're not going to win. You're not. You're not, bro. Kawhi Leonard. Wait, we haven't seen him really play yet, but the Clippers should be very good. Uh, 
the Bucks are very good, but most most of them are homegrown. You know what I'm saying? So it's cool, man. It's very cool to see. This was a great video, though. I enjoyed seeing the numbers. See, you know that Michael Jordan one we're looking at Curry was jokes, bro. <laughs> but a lot of these players, they're worth actually a lot more. Like Giannis is worth more than his contract. John Rand's worth more than his contract. Curry's worth more, like like like, like easily. It's, it's it's absolutely fascinating. But hey, man, what do you guys think? Do you think he's wrong? Do you think he's right? Let me know in the comments down below, man. Great video by the cousin Jimmy, man. I'm getting out of here, man. I gotta just get ready for the gym. It's your boy Melly. I'm signing out. And per usual, peace, love, and keep the drip immaculate at all times, baby. Stay easy, breezy, beautiful, sexy, amazing, awesome, elegant, inspirational, healthy, but most importantly, drink water, my friends. And clean your room. Roll the 10K subs is the new milestone, and we can do it, y'all. I love and appreciate y'all so much. Again, follow me on Instagram at M-E-L-L-V-B. Follow me on Twitch. At Melly the third, it'll be down in the description, so you can just check it out. You know, show your boy some love, man. Let's keep get, let's keep growing and growing and growing, like a damn garden weed that doesn't want to go away, but in a good way. You know what I'm saying? Love y'all so much, man. Today's Friday, man. It's gorgeous outside. I don't know if, we're, if you're from New York or not, but man, oh, shout out to uh, the homie. I, I love this. Shh. He's from New Rochelle, man. Shout out to you, family. Shout out to you, bro. We show much love to our, all our New Yorkers, bro. Even our neighbors from Philly or wherever they may be at. We show love, Jersey, everything, man. Love y'all so much, man. Enjoy your day, and please be safe, y'all. Peace. Bow. And love, y'all. Bye. <laughs> Mwah. <laughs>